for all eternity. He that hated his life. Do you hate your life for three days? In this world, shall keep it into life eternity. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. What did Jesus mean when he said, he that hateth is God? The scripture have a similar scripture in the book of Revelation, where it describes the salvation of God in Christ Jesus coming into the world. In Revelation 12, 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And listen to this. And they loved not their lives unto death. Now I want you to notice the two things that overcome the devil in our lifetime. The first of which is being washed in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, I want you to pay close attention because this is what you're going to pass on. This is what you're going to invest in other people. Before I start, my discipleship, when I used to teach discipleship, I used to ask people, how would you get saved? And so they said, well, I asked Jesus in my life. And so how did that save you? Well, he died on the cross. Okay, so how did that save you? Well, he died on the cross. Down across my sins, that's how I say it. But how does that say it? Well, he forgave me all my sins. Yeah, but how did that work? How did, how did that happen? And I was astounded that in all the discipleship that I talked about, nobody could give me a straight answer. I had all the pat answers. <coughs> And so I've dedicated it in my life that every time I preach, I, do, I say something about the blood, I say something about the resurrection and the crucifixion of God. That your faith should lie on the gospel, not in men's words. This is how you got bathed in the blood of the Lamb. This is how you overcome from the blood of the Lamb the word of your testimony. Having heard the gospel of Christ and being convicted of our sins, we were a remnant of our old life. We saw it for the filth it was. Our eyes were open, I call the apostle, scales fell off. And we asked Jesus to come into our hearts and our souls in the form of the Holy Ghost. When that took place, not only did the blood and the power of the Spirit reach into the every fiber of your soul and wash away every sin we had ever committed, but then our souls which had been dead in our sins were taken by that same Holy Ghost and made one with the Spirit of God, causing them to be raised from the dead in Christ Jesus, now residing inside of the Christian. Yeah. The results? Romans 6, 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Yeah. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Before you were born in sin, and sin was your slave master. But Jesus, when he came into your soul, he put to death that slave master by opening your eye, convicting your soul of sin, and saying, God, you are the Lord, save me. When he came in, the old slave master died. Hallelujah. And sin will never, ever have dominion over you. Paul the Apostle said, from now on, you've got to make a decision to serve sin. You can't play dummy with it anymore. You can't say, I didn't do anything. If you don't know how to resist sin, God will teach you how to resist sin. He'll teach you what is sinful. I, for the long, longest time, didn't think there was anything wrong with beating somebody up and thinking God was in my way. Because I met Jesus. But the Lord showed me that that was wrong, and I stopped. I had to stop. God convicted my soul. I used to cuss every third word of my language. I used to cuss and swear. It said the most perverted, filthy, rotten thing. And when Jesus came in, one of the first things he did is you can't help that. It's unholy, it's unclean. It's a spirit of hell. It's 
spirit of Antichrist. I was convicted in my soul. I said, God forbid that I should ever do those things again. Not resisting. I said, oh, oh, I hope I don't do that. No, God forbid that I should ever do those things again. Colossians 3.3 3 says, for you are dead. You're dead people. If you're in Christ Jesus alive, you no longer live in those things that you used to live in. You're dead to them. You're a corpse to them. Oh, you still breathe and walk and eat steak if you're lucky like I am. I hope to. <laughs> but that horrific engine of death that once led us into every perversion, every hypocritical sin on the planet has been slain by the power of the cross, by the power of the blood. Thank you, Jesus. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. He can't touch me. The enemy, my life is hidden in Christ, in God. How many of y'all see those little wooden brushing dolls that have the different compartments? Yes. They're like 12, 15 compartments, so frustrating before you get to the final the last one. Well, that, that's what it reminds me of. My life, Herman Castro, is hidden in Christ, and he's in God. No wonder the scripture says, if God be for me, who can be against me? Hebrews 9, 16 begins to explain it this way. For where a testament is. Is there a testament of the gospel in your life? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if there's a testament of the gospel in your life. That's what it says. For where a testament is, there must also be necessary. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the test is given. I'm going to explain that. When you've been falling asleep, wake up. In the Old Testament, or the old contract of inheritance with God, God had it with his people was that until the eternal atonement, the Old Testament, God had it with Jesus. God had this contract with him until an eternal atonement could be made in Christ Jesus in the Old Testament. He would accept the sacrifices of certain animals and their blood as temporary atonement for the individual sins of his people. How do we know it was only a temporary atonement? The Bible says in Hebrews 10.1, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the come of their unto prayer. For then would they have not ceased to be offered? If the blood of goats and bulls could forgive your sins, there wouldn't have been any need for you to come back the next year and slaughter more bulls and goats for your sins. But in those sacrifices there's a remembrance again, made of sins every year. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to say something that's totally unrelated to this subject. If there's sin in your life, there's nothing you can do to better it. So repent. You can't choose to be philanthropic by giving to certain ministries, money, labor. God is not impressed by you crying out that you're in bondage to sin and that you can't help being in bondage. You know why? Because sin won't have to mean over you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down strongholds. He's impressed by your suffering because he loves you. But you can't offer up anything for 